We've come to the last part of chemical reactions, and that's looking at the types of reactions and being able to classify the reactions and also being able to predict whether or not a reaction is going to occur. We're going to look at the five major types of reactions. We've got synthesis, decomposition, combustion. We've got single displacement and double displacement, which are also called single replacement and double replacement. So you'll hear that interchangeably. And again, we're going to find out if we can predict these and recognize them just by their reactants. Now we're going to start off with synthesis reactions. Okay, That's where you have two elements or compounds and they combine together to make one compound. So we have, we have generic element A plus generic element B. They combine together to make a compound AB. Um, one example of that, real life example here, is sulfur trioxide mixing with water to make sulfuric acid. You've got the sulfur trioxide, you've got the water, they come together and they make a compound, sulfuric acid. Let's look at some examples. I've got magnesium and I've got nitrogen. If those two combine together, they're going to make magnesium nitride. Now it's really important that I look up the oxidation state so I know how many magnesium and nitrogen are combining to make this product. And when I do that on the periodic table, I know that magnesium is 2 plus and nitrogen is 3 minus. So I'm going to have Mg3 and 2. Those go away. They get erased. Um, and then I would need to balance this equation out, which is going to be easy enough. So I've made magnesium nitride in this synthesis reaction. Down here with carbon and, or with calcium and with chlorine, I'm going to make calcium chloride. And if I look up the oxidation state, 2 plus for um, chlorine, it's 1 minus, which means to even these out, I'm going to have CaCl2. And again, those already balance out. Let's check out the reaction of rust. This is rust in the, in the presence of oxygen. And we've got iron 3, so this is going to be iron 3 plus reacting with oxygen to make iron 3 oxide. Now, um, rust can form in the presence of water and it's complex and I will I'll put a link on the web page about the description of the more complex processes of making rust. But for this one, let's just go ahead and put them together in our synthesis reaction by combining these two. So we're going to end up ultimately with iron plus oxygen gas reacting to form iron oxide. Now this is iron 3 plus, so I'm going to put that 3 plus up there. We know that oxygen has a 2 minus oxidation state. I move the 3 down here and I move the 2 over here. Again, those need to be erased and go away. And then I balance this out with 4 iron, 3 oxygen gas, and 2 iron oxide. We can make iron oxide very quickly by getting steel or iron to rust but rusting typically takes a long time. So if we take some steel wool, the main component in that is iron, and spread it out so that oxygen can get in between there, we can speed the rust up with a little bit of flame. Now oxygen is combining with the iron, making iron oxide or making rust. So remember, synthesis reaction makes one product. So if I have two compounds coming together instead of just two elements, they're going to make a polyatomic ion. Now, my example down here, uh, and actually a combination, it's going to have a polyatomic ion in it. If I combine these two together, then I'm going to end up with HCO3. And um, the oxidation state for CO3, which is carbonate, is 2 minus. And for hydrogen, it's 1 plus. So I need H2CO3. This is carbonic acid, and it forms in the oceans or in any water when there's an excess of CO2 mixing with the water, we get carbonic acid. So again, we've combined to make this polyatomic ion hooked to that hydrogen. The next one are combustion reactions, and a combustion reaction is where oxygen combines with a substance and it releases energy, usually in the form of heat and light, so we can see these reactions happen. good example of that is methane. You can see methane down there is CH4. When it reacts with oxygen gas, it makes carbon dioxide and water. I'll prove it to you right here. Let's see this in action. I put some bubble solution inside a beaker and then I'm bubbling methane in there so that all of these bubbles are filled with methane. A little fire, it combines with all the oxygen in the air, and here we go, we've got our reaction. 
So let's try another example, like the gasoline in your vehicle has octane in it, and um, that octane is C8H18, so I've got C8H18, and it combusts in the presence of oxygen gas. This is actually in um, liquid form, although your fuel injectors, things like that, try to vaporize it down to as small of a as small as it can so it can burn very easily and this is in the presence of oxygen gas oxygen is always O2 because it's a diatomic molecule and we're saying those two react together in a combustion reaction and when they do they're gonna form carbon dioxide gas which is CO2 carbon dioxide plus water vapor which is H2O now that's liquid or gas depending on the size of the molecules um, so I've put liquid here and um, all I need to do now is balance this equation out I'm just gonna let it pop up on the screen but it'd be a good practice one for you so I balanced this out we have two octanes um, for every two octane we need 25 oxygen molecules to get this to reaction to occur and then coming out of our tailpipe for each mole of or each two moles of that octane that's burning are 16 moles of carbon dioxide and 18 of water. The next one are decomposition. This is the opposite of a synthesis reaction because it's decomposing or breaking apart. Um, so we've got that AB, like the one that we put together before, breaking up into its two parts. If we run electricity, that's why it says electricity over the top of the line there, um, through sodium chloride, which is table salt, it'll break up into the components that it's made of, which is sodium and chlorine gas. Same thing with calcium carbonate. That's the CO3 is carbonate. It will break up into calcium oxide and CO2 gas. So um, they're decomposing or breaking apart. Um, if the compound has more than two elements, you must be given one of the products, at least at this stage in the game, because it's almost impossible to be able to predict what's going to happen. You'll learn that later on. So if we grab a pen down here and we look, we've got nickel carbonate is reacting to form nickel oxide. What do we have left? We have CO2. So I've chosen simple ones here, obviously, that will balance themselves out. In fact, that's already balanced. Then I've got carbonic acid, which is what we talked about earlier, that forms when carbon dioxide is dissolved in water, makes carbonic acid. This is something that's happening very um, rapidly in the oceans right now. But it can also go the reverse direction and decompose into carbon dioxide and H2O. So these are our decomposition reactions. And one more as an example, we've got H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide is naturally decomposing all the time into H2O, which is water, and oxygen gas. So I'll put liquid here, and I'll put aqueous, because technically we use 30%. This Ki here, this is potassium iodide. This is our catalyst that gets the reaction to happen very quickly, which you're going to see next. So this is called elephant toothpaste. It shows the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. And I like to do this with about 25 or so milliliters of Dawn dish soap. Fill that in the bottom. I've pre-measured out 10 grams of potassium iodide, which you saw as the catalyst. And I'm adding a little bit of water just so that catalyst can move around more easily and into the solution. Now the bottle here is 30% hydrogen peroxide so it's the really strong stuff which is why I have the gloves and when I'm making elephant toothpaste I want to have a line of red and a line of blue so it looks like Colgate or Crest toothpaste I dump them in together and we get to watch this hydrogen peroxide decompose very quickly because of that catalyst of potassium iodide and again we call this elephant toothpaste then we've got single displacement reactions, which are also called single replacement reactions. And that's where we end up with a little dosy -si dough, -si -do, um, where we end up with this lone A coming over here and breaking off the B, and then the B going and living by itself. You can see the products of that over here. Now, one thing that we have to have to be able to do these is the activity series. I grabbed this one 
let me go back I grabbed this one right off of Wikipedia I'll put the link down there at the bottom so you can easily find this it's a super handy thing you need it's also called the activity series or the reactivity series called both things um, but I always call it the activity series and during a reaction a metal can replace any metal below it in the series in other words if um, if a over here was cesium which is at the top it can definitely go over here and break any other metal off that was B so if um, cesium was all by itself it could go over and break a lithium off of something else let me show you an example with that so will the following reactions occur we've got silver and we've got um, copper nitrate what we're trying to find out is will this silver come over here and break this copper off the reason I need to do that silver makes a positive ion copper makes a positive ion and nitrate makes a negative ion so this silver could only come over and break off another cation or a positive ion the way I figure out whether or not this reaction will occur is I come down here and I find silver first so here's silver right here and then I find copper and coppers right here so copper is higher on the activity series which means it's more active than the silver so this copper is going to hang on to the nitrate. It's not going to let go. This silver is not active enough to actually break that copper off and let it go live by itself. So because this copper is above this silver over here on the activity series, then this is a no reaction. We write NR because this reaction will not occur. What if I'm dealing with um, halogens that make a negative ion? Again, I look up the oxidation state and I see Cl2, which is chlorine gas, makes a negative ion. I know that hydrogen will make a plus one and fluorine will make a minus one. I like to put those there because it reminds me I'm trying to figure out if this now chlorine will break that fluorine off and attach itself and make the fluorine live by itself. So I come down here and find chlorine. Chlorine is right here and fluorine is right here so again this reaction is not going to occur because chlorine is below fluorine so we should probably look at one that does occur I can tell you that this one does and you're gonna see a demo of it here in just a second but let's go ahead and write it out we've got iron oxide this 3 plus means that it's iron with a three plus charge up here not with a three down here you gotta be really careful oxide is oxygen it has a two minus charge so this two has to come down here and this three goes down here to even these out again my eraser doesn't work so I'm just gonna scribble those out and this is solid says right in the equation reacts with solid aluminum so plus aluminum solid and those are gonna react to form what well, if this is a single displacement reaction, this positive can only come over and break off another positive, or this aluminum can only break off that iron, and it will. So in other words, it's going to make aluminum oxide, and it's going to leave that iron all by itself. So aluminum is a 3 plus charge, oxygen is a 2 minus, I'm going to need a 2 down here, a 3 over here. Again, you need to erase those, but my eraser is not working, so we'll do without and to balance this thing out oh I should put the states of matter on here this is a solid and this is a solid I need two of the iron there and to check my answer two of the aluminum this is my balanced equation here watch it in action all you need for this demo are two rusty steel balls so go out to the farmyard find some wrap one of them in aluminum and smash them together and it works and last but not least we've got double replacement reactions that's where you get a complete flip-flop where the A will go over and knock off the B and then the B will attach to the X and it's just a complete do -si do So the first thing you need to do is identify the cations and the anions, pair up the cations and anions in the product, which I'll show you how to do that using this as an example. And then of course you need to balance the equation. So we're gonna look at calcium hydroxide when it's dropped into hydrochloric acid. And when that happens, we end up with a double displacement. We know that calcium makes a positive ion, it's a cation, and hydrogen does as well. So what we're trying to figure out here, or not figure out, we know that this is going to happen. This calcium will go over and break off that hydrogen and switch around. So if it does that, let's write this out. We're going to have Ca plus the Cl 
plus this hydrogen is going to go over here and we're going to have HOH. HOH is H two H's and an O, which is water. Um, these are all going to be aqueous, or aqueous and this is going to be liquid. And then I know calcium's got a two plus charge, chlorine's got a negative, so I need a two here. This is already fine because it's water. It is uh, covalently bonded, which is H2O. And then when I go to balance this out, I start to count them up and I need a two here and a two here. And this thing is balanced out in my double displacement reaction. Our last example here, we've got aqueous iron three chloride is mixed with aqueous potassium thiocyanate. What are the products? Well, let's find out. We've got iron, Fe, that three stands for the oxidation state, which is three plus, and then we've got chlorine, which is a minus. So to even these out, this three needs to come down here and I need to erase those and get rid of them. Plus, so iron three chloride is mixed with aqueous, ooh, this was aqueous, plus, aqueous potassium thiocyanate. Potassium is K, thiocyanate is SCN. It's a polyatomic ion, and you'll need to look those ones up. So these all live together as one polyatomic ion, like a carbonate or a nitrate or anything else. When these react together in a double displacement reaction, we need this iron to come over here and break this positive potassium off of there and attach itself to the thiocyanate, so S, C, N, plus, so the iron came over here and attached to this, so then that means the potassium had to come over here. We've got K, C, L. So I've rewritten that out to make it a little more legible, and you can see what we end up with with our iron thiocyanate, our iron 3 thiocyanate, and our potassium chloride. Now, this equation and this reaction is actually a little more complex than I presented it here, but for learning this process of double displacement, this works out just fine. Now, this is called the Bloody Valentine. This is part of a Valentine's lab with a bunch of chemical reaction stations that we do. And so this is the potassium thiocyanate. I'm just dumping some in there. You can do this on a micro scale. You can do it on a macro scale if you want. And then this is the iron three chloride. I'm dumping that in and as it goes in immediately you get that double displacement or double replacement reaction and it looks just like blood. All that iron and hemoglobin in our blood um, has a, the same composition as the iron that starts to break out of this reaction. Remember I said it's a little more complicated than I presented it there. There you go. Well, I hope you learned something about the five major types of reactions and being able to classify them and predict reactions. If you uh, made any mistakes or got confused on any of this, there are videos prior to this that will help you out. And I'll put links to them down at the bottom and probably somewhere around on the page here. And we're moving on to some other things like learning about moles and then eventually getting into stoichiometry. So if you just keep working your way along, you're going to have this chemistry down in no time. So good luck and keep on learning.